Hello folks, it's uh, Gameplay Horizon here once again and uh, welcome back to my uh, channel. And this is the version 1 tier list for AFK Journey. And we have here Viperian. And Viperian is a Graveborn, a mage, also a magic with a range of 5. In which uh, Viperian here, uh, the ultimate skill, uh, Spiritual a Viper, in which it burns HP and sends uh, Dark uh, Vipers to possess the enemies dealing that massive uh, damage. We have also here the Vitality Extract in which uh, Viperian drains HP from the healthiest or highest HP enemy. And uh, the Enchantment Fang, Dark Viper uh, launch a tearing bite uh, periodically to deal a uh, damage. And uh, we have also here the Crimson Waltz in which it burns HP to deal a massive damage to all enemies with when having a higher HP portion. And I would put a uh, Viperian here at the C tier. Next, uh, we have here Salazar. Okay, Salazar is a Graveborn, also a Rogue, and a Physical with a range of 1, in which uh, his ultimate skill, it uh, summons a Swords to deal damage to the enemy. And uh, we have here the Entraptured Whip, in which Salazar whips enemies within the radius of Arc, dealing damage once more if uh, the Prisoner is hit. And we have also here the Soul Cage, in which Salazar imprisons an enemy with a low HP ratio, making them unable to move or act. And the AX uh, skill we have here in Raptured Whip, a uh, cooldown is removed when a battle starts or when the enemy is imprisoned. So we'll put a Salazar here at the D tier. Next, uh, we have here a uh, Sylvina. So Sylvina here is a great board also, a rogue, a physical with a range of 1. In which uh, this ultimate skill called the uh, Soul Reaper, Sylvina deals damage to the enemy with the most energy, reducing their energy and silencing them. We had also here the uh, first strike in which uh, Sylvina flashes to the next closest enemy in a symmetrical uh, position and uh, damages uh, them when a battle starts. And uh, the Shield of Light in which Sylvina creates a barrier to reduce her magic damage taken when the battle starts. And we have here the extra skill in which uh, Sylvina normal attacks are replaced with world attacks for a short period of time when the battle uh, starts. And I will put uh, Sylvina here at the B tier. Next, uh, we have here, okay, this is Nero. So Nero is also a Graveborn, a support, a magic with a range of 1. In which uh, her ultimate skill called uh, Spirit Salvation, Nero stores one ally's soul, allowing them to continue fighting on the battlefield in a spirit form after taking a fatal blow. And we have also here the Soul Reaping, in which Nero deals damage to the weakest enemy and the lower the target's HP, the higher the damage. And uh, we have also here the skill of uh, Nero, which is the Soul Drain, in which Nero extracts the vitality of the enemy to heal himself and the ally. And the extra skill called the Soul Sponge, in which a Nero enters a spirit form when he is defeated and increases his stats by extracting the enemy's soul. And we will place here Nero at the B tier. Next, we have here Enya. So Enya is a wielder, a mage, a magic with a range of 5, in which uh, the ultimate skill called the Floral Splendor, Enya marks a target with a flower and deals AOA damage to them. Next skill, we have Wilder Blessing, in which in Enya increases attack speed and the normal attack damage for herself and an ally. And we have here the Flower Power, in which Enya shoots up flowers to attack the enemies along the path each time she deals a multiple normal attack damage. And the extra skills of Enya is that Enya marks the nearest enemy in a symmetrical position with a flower when the battle starts. So I will put Enya at the D tier. Next, uh, we have here Kafra. So, uh, Kafra is a wielder, a warrior, a physical with a range of 1. So, uh, Kafra's ultimate skill called uh, Gale Thrust, in which uh, Kafra moves an enemy close to him. And we have also here Relentless Sword, in which uh, Kafra charges towards the uh, marked enemy, dealing damage and stun them. We have also here the Wind Mark, in which uh, Kafra reduces marked enemy's uh, physical defense, and he also gains buff when the marked enemy is uh, defeated. And the extra skill of this uh, Kafra is that the uh, Kafra attacks the enemy who heals the marked enemy. And I will place a uh, Kafra at the D tier. Next, uh, we have here Damian. So Damian is a wielder, a support, a magic type with a range of 20. So Damian's ultimate skill called Explode Mark Chariot. So Damian builds or controls a toy chariot to blind enemies. And we have also here the emergency support in which uh, Damian controls a toy chariot to restore allies HP or his own energy. And we have also here it's a plane in which uh, Damian controls a toy plane to stun the farthest enemy. And we have here inventor's wheel in which uh, toy chariots increases the haste of nearby allied heroes. And I will place a uh, Damian here at the B tier. So next uh, we have here Laika. So Laika here is a wielder. A marksman, a physical with a range of 5, and the ultimate skill called the Comet Archery, Laika fires a comet like arrow, dealing damage to enemies in the path. 
allies within the range as someone meteors dealing additional damage while using their attacks. And we have here Imperial Blessing in which Laika increases all allies' attack speed and her first uh, casting also grants them energy and haste. We have also here a Nova Fall in which Laika summons meteors to attack three enemies with the highest of physical defense, reducing their physical defense. And the extra skill of Laika called the Meteor Catastrophe in which Laika summons meteors to destroy an enemy's shield and stuns them. And I will place this Laika at the B tier. So next, uh, we have here Arden. So Arden is also a wielder, a mage, a magic with a range of 5. In which uh, Arden here has an ultimate skill called the Force of Nature. In which uh, Arden summons dark clouds to strike the enemies with lightning for several seconds. Enemies are subject to more lightning strikes when controlled. And we have also here the Entangling Roots. In which Arden's vines entangle two enemies and deals continuous damage. And next, a skill that is called the Gift of Nature. Arden recovers energy for himself when enemy heroes are controlled. And the extra skills of Arden, called the Thorn of Protection, in which Arden protects an ally with thorns to contra or counter attack the adjacent attackers and stun them. So I will place Arden here at the C tier. Next, uh, we have here Satrana. So uh, Satrana here is a Mauler, a mage, a magic with a range of 1. In which the ultimate skill of uh, Satrana called the uh, Fairy Dance, uh, Satrana deals a continuous damage to enemies and is invincible during the effect. And also we have your skill called the uh, Vixen Rush, in which Satrana attacks enemies within the radius of arc and gains uh, life a drain. We have also here Ignite a Passions. Satrana or allies with sparks ignite enemies, reducing their vitality and dealing continuous damage to them. And the extra skill of uh, Satrana in which uh, it ignites uh, enemies, causing her and her allies to take uh, less magic damage. So I will place uh, Satrana here at the B tier. Next, uh, we have here Kruger. So Kruger is a Mauler, a Warrior, a Physical, and with a Rage of 1. In which uh, the ultimate skill of this uh, Kruger called the uh, Devastating Axe, uh, Kruger attacks multiple enemies and reduces their physical defense. We have also here the skill called the uh, Smashing Assault, in which uh, Kruger attacks an enemy and reduces their physical defense until the battle ends. This effect can be stopped. And the next skill called the Vital Strike, in which a Kruger deals a damage and inflicts vulnerable to enemies with low physical defense. And the target's physical damage taken is increased and the attacker's HP is recovered. And the extra skill of uh, Kruger, in which uh, when the battle starts, Kruger gains a shield if uh, there are no allies nearby. During the battle, he gains life drain when uh, no allies are nearby. So I'll place a uh, Kruger here at a tier C. So next, uh, we have here Seth. Uh, so Seth is a Mauler, a Rogue, a Physical with a range of 1. So Seth's uh, Shadow Strike, uh, this is uh, his ultimate skill. <laughs> Seth uh, flashes towards an enemy and deals multiple attacks. We have also here the skill called uh, Beatdown, in which uh, Seth uh, pounces on the weakest nearby enemy and deals damage. We have also here the another skill which is called Hunter Instinct, in which uh, Seth uh, gains stats bonuses when an enemy's HP is too low. And the extra skill of this uh, Seth is that uh, when an enemy is defeated, Seth immediately resets the cooldown of a beatdown and recovers some energy. And I will place a Seth at the B tier. So next, uh, we have here Eddie. So Eddie is a Mauler, a Marksman, a Magic with a range of 5. And uh, the ultimate skill of Eddie is called a Corrosive uh, Dart, in which uh, Eddie deals continuous damage to an enemy. We have also here the skill called the Triple Tap, in which Eddie shoots uh, triple normal attacks to an enemy. And the next skill is a Natural Hunter, in which Eddie's uh, normal attacks hit a poisoned enemy. The target's uh, dark uh, poison's damage is increased. And the extra skill of this Eddie is that Eddie immediately defeats a poison targets when their HP is too low. And I will put the Eddie here at the tier C. So next, uh, we have here Fey. So Fey is a light bearer, a support, a magic with a range of 3. And uh, the ultimate skill of Fey called the Vibrant Dance, in which a Fey enhances and heals allies within the range. We have here also the healing skill of this uh, Fey, in which a Fey heals one ally over time. And the next skill is called the Blinding Light, in which a Fey is max a gem, damaging enemies and healing allies in range. And we have also here the extra skill of a Fey called the Grand Entrance, in which a Fey enhances and heals at the ally deployed on the tile in front of him of herself when the battle starts. And I will place Fey at the tier C. So next, uh, we have here Corin. So Corin is a light barrier, a warrior, physical with a range of 2, in which the ultimate skill of this Corin called the Demon Seal Spear, in which uh, Corin knocks back nearby enemies and immobilizes them. We have also here the all-around tactic, 
in which Corrin jumps next to an ally, granting them a shield and dealing true damage to enemies. The next skill is called Air Strike, in which a Corrin deals a guaranteed critical strike to enemies one tile beyond. And the extra skill of this uh, Corrin is that the Corrin deals additional true damage to enemies when he and allies cast a certain amount of ultimates, in which I will place a Corrin here at the B tier. Next, uh, we have here Lucius. So uh, Lucius is a light bearer, a tank, a physical with a range of 1. And uh, we have here the ultimate skill of uh, Lucius called Divine Light Ages, in which uh, Lucius uh, provides allies with a shield. And the next uh, skill called Divine Bash, in which Lucius uh, thrusts his shield to deal damage to an enemy when uh, knocking them back and uh, knocking them down. We have also here the Divine Light uh, Blessing, in which Lucius heals allies with his shield and weakened to a certain extent. And the extra skill of this uh, Lucius is that uh, when shielded, Lucius attracts an enemy to attack him in priority, reducing their attack. And I will place this uh, Lucius on the B tier. Next, guys, we have here Meren. So Meren is also a light bearer, a, ma a marksman, physical with a range of 5, in which uh, Meren's ultimate skill called mid-air shot. Meren leaps to a far location while shooting at targets. We have also here the Mighty Arrow. Meren launches a Mighty Shoot and stuns a target every two normal attacks. And the next skill of this Meren is called Hyper Focus, in which a Meren increases attack and attack speed when no enemies are nearby. And we have also here the extra skill of Meren called the Battlefield Learning, in which a Meren's attack is increased when allies cast an ultimate. After reaching a max stacks, her normal attacks deal true damage. And I will put the Meren here on the D tier. Next, uh, we have here Mirael. So, uh, Mirael, guys, is a light bearer, a mage, a magic with a range of 3. Her ultimate skill called the Wing of Flame. Mirael summons a wall of flame to deal damage to burned enemies. And we have here the skill called Bone Seer. Burns and enemies dealing continuous damage to them. And also, we have here the Fireball uh, Singe, in which it shoots a fireball at a target and deals damage to a small area. And next, uh, we have here the extra skill called the Fairy Blood in which Mirael uses Fireball Singe as her normal attacks after first casting her ultimate skill. And Mirael will be on this tier C. Next, we have here Valen. So Valen is a light bearer, a warrior, a physical with a range of 1. His ultimate skill called a Thunder Sword Work, in which Valen launches several quick strikes within range and gains in vibration. We have also here the skill called Unseen Blade. Valen deals damage to enemy 3 times, and he deals chain damage to another enemies during invigoration. And the next skill called a Fury Thunder Strike, Valen deals damage to nearby enemies and stuns them. And the extra skill of uh, Valen is that invigoration status is permanent and grants increasing attack bonus. And Valen here guys will be at this uh, tier B. So next uh, we have here Sesha. So Sesha here is a Greyborn, a marksman, physical with a range of 5. Her ultimate skill called Queen's Summons. Sisha summons Mr. Carlisle to assist in the battlefield. We have also here the Earth's Offering in which uh, increases Sisha and Mr. Carlisle's attack speed. And next, a Thorn Cluster in which uh, Sisha deals enormous damage every few normal attacks. And the extra skill of uh, Sesha is that uh, Sesha entangles an enemy and absorbs stats from the target. And uh, Sesha will be moved to a tier. Next, we have here Igor. So Igor here is a Graveborn, a warrior, a physical with a range of 10. So this is a very decent hero. So uh, the, his ultimate skill called the uh, Funeral Ring. Igor deals damage to all enemies. And uh, we have also here Ghastly Explosion. Igor jumps onto an activated tombstone, deals damage to nearby enemies, and then deactivates that tombstone. And next, we have here Soul Siphon. Igor jumps to another tombstone and dodge a fatal blow. He recovers HP while moving between tombstones. And we have here the extra skill called Horror Strike. Igor extends the range of ghastly explosions when his HP ratio is above a certain limit. So I will place this Igor guys at this uh, S tier. So next uh, we have here Carolina. So uh, Carolina here is a Greyborn, a mage, a magic with a range of uh, 4. And uh, her ultimate skill called the Frozen Grave, in which Carolina deals damage and freezes an enemy and creates an arctic field that inflicts a frostbite. We have also here the skill called the Freezing Nova, in which Carolina deals damage to a small area and inflicts a frostbite. And next, uh, we have here a Snowball Witchery. Carolina surrounds himself with the snowballs 
which automatically attacks enemies under control effects. And the extra skill of Carolina is called Frost Protection, in which a snowball witchery deals more damage and area damage and reduces magic defense. So Carolina here will be at this A tier. Next, uh, we have here Thoran. So guys, uh, Thoran is a Greyborn, a tank, a physical with a range of 1. And uh, this is a very decent tank hero. So uh, we have here the ultimate skill called Soul Retaliation, in which uh, Thoran charges up to launch a terrifying strike and returns multiple damage received. And uh, we have here also the Soul Plunder. Thoran drains an amount of HP from the enemy with the highest HP. And the next skill would be the Resurrection. Thoran can revive himself once after being defeated. And the extra skill called Soul Pack, Thoran takes some damage for an ally. And I will place a Thoran, guys, at this uh, S tier. So next uh, we have here Brian. So Brian is a wielder, a marksman, a magic with a range of 5. In which the ultimate skill of uh, Brian called the Fant Falcon Raid. Brian summons Kara to deal damage to current target and fight alongside. We have also here the skill called Tacit Strike in which uh, Brian uh, summons magic leaves to attack the enemy. Next, the Shadow Flash in which uh, Brian and Kara passively gain crit damage boost absorbing energy when deal crit strikes. Brian deals two guaranteed critical strikes when casting the skill and the extra skill of Brian is the, called the Spiritual Companion. When Brian is being controlled or taking a single high damage attack, Kara deals high damage to an enemy and stuns them. Kara can block the fatal damage for Brian. And I will place uh, Brian here at this A tier. Next, we have here Granny Danny, and this is a very decent tank also. He, she is a wielder, a tank, a physical with a range of 1. The ultimate skill of this uh, hero called the Threshold of Jade, Granny Danny summons a parasitic grass to immobilize the enemies in range, absorb their HP, and reduce their energy. She is also immune to control effects during the effect. And we have here the Seed Cannon. When an enemy deals a certain amount of total damage to Granny Danny, she attacks them back with parasitic seeds, reducing their haste. And next, we have here the Angry Taunt, in which Granny Danny taunts an enemy and recovers HP. And we have here the extra skill called the Grimmer Bloom Blessing. Soon as Granny Danny's HP is low, she gains a physical defense, magic defense, and recovers HP. So Granny Danny would be on this S tier. Next, we have here Aeron. So Aeron is also a wielder, a rogue, a magic with a range of 1. And the ultimate skill of Aeron called Elemental Realm, Aeron summons magical swords and lures nearby enemies to the center, deals damage to enemies, and immobilizes them. We have also here the skill called Ice Spike, in which Aeron deals AoE damage with two swords and reduces enemies' haste and magic defense. We have also here the Elemental Barrier, in which Aeron gains a shield and dodge. And also we have here Howling Hurricane, in which Aeron can cast the first ultimate on a neat tile once when the battle starts. And Aaron guys will be on this A tier. Next, we have here Hewin. So Hewin is also a wielder, a support, magic, and with a range of 4. So the ultimate skill of uh, Hewin called Rain Prayer, in which uh, Hewin heals all allies uh, continuously. We have also here the skill called the Wound Healing, in which Hewin heals an ally for a small amount of HP. Next, we have also here the Revitalize skill in which uh, Hewen heals allies and removes their dispelled debuffs. And we have here the Tranquility or the extra skill. Hewen is immune to all control effects and reduces damage received by allies when casting Rain Prayer. So this Hewen guys would be on this S tier. So next, uh, we have here Shakir. So Shakir is a Mauler, a rogue, a physical with a range of 1. And the ultimate skill called Wolf Form. Shakir transformed into a wolf with more powerful combat capabilities. And the skill called Agonizing Rush in which Shakir launches three consecutive strikes dealing AoE damage while in wolf form. Next, we have Will Wolf's Will in which Shakir gains range de defense while in wolf form and also gains life drain. And we have here the extra skill called uh, All Conquering. Shakir is immune to control effects while in wolf form. So I will place a Shakir here at the S tier. And next uh, we have here Smokey and Murky. So this hero is a Mauler, a support, magic with a range of 8. In which uh, the ultimate skill called the special, uh, special Aroma. Smokey and Murky creates an aroma and provides continuous healing. Activate using the skills level up the aroma. And we have here energizing a formula in which a Smokey and Murky increases the attack of allies within the aroma and recover energy. And then next we have here Quirk. Recovery. Smoke and Murky heals allies within the aroma and the extra skill called Withering Potion in which uh, Smoky and Murky 
gains improved aroma 3, dealing more damage to enemies. And this hero will be placed on this uh, A tier. Next, uh, we have here Lamont. So Lamont is a mauler, a tank, a physical with a range of 1. And the ultimate skill of a Lamont called Lamont's Charge. In which the Lamont's Charge is towards the enemy in line, dealing damage and knocking them back toward the charge destination. And we have here the Totem Power in which uh, Lamont gains a shield. The more enemies nearby, the higher the shield value. And next, we have here the War Stomp, in which Lomont stomps the ground and deal AoE damage. And we have here the extra skill called Rage, in which Lomont initiates an enraged attack after receiving certain amount of damage, dealing damage to enemies within a different range and reduce, decreasing their attack. And guys, Lomont is very powerful, and I will place him at this S tier. So next, we have here Brutus. So uh, Brutus is also a Mauler, a Warrior. A physical with a range of 1, in which we have here the ultimate skill called Whirlwind Wrath. Brutus spins his sword dealing damage to adjacent enemies every second. We have here also the Ferocious Roar, in which Brutus are taunting nearby enemies and reducing their physical defense. And next, the skill called Indomitable. Brutus is immune to the first fatal blow and the physical and magic damage for a shorter period of time. And the extra skill called the Cleaving Strike. Brotos cleaves in front of him and gains life drain after receiving physical damage several times from adjacent uh, enemies. And I will place this uh, Brotos guys at this uh, A tier. So next uh, we have here Timesha. So Timesha is a light bearer, a tank, a physical with a range of 1. So we have here the ultimate skill of uh, Timesha called Knight's Heart in which the passive skill. Timesha charges on the battlefield dealing damage to all enemies in her path. The active skill, Demesha summons her mount and leap forward, dealing damage and knocking adjacent enemies down and increasing her charge speed. We have also here the Iron Will, in which Demesha deals damage and inflicts damage down effect to the enemy while changing the charge direction. And the Courage Sword, Demesha deals the damage to surrounding enemies based on the target's attack. And the extra skill of Demesha is called the Invisible Fury, in which Demesha here gains permanent control immunity and turns the charge damage into true damage after casting the ultimate several times. So Temesha guys would be on this S tier. So next uh, we have here Atalanta. So Atalanta is a light bearer, a marksman, a physical with a range of 4. The ultimate skill of Atalanta called the Wild Sniper in which Atalanta dashes forward and shoots a powerful penetrative bolt in a direction. We have also here a Sweet Encounter in which Atalanta knocks an enemy back. If another enemy is behind the target within range, skills effects are applied to both of them. You have also here the Scorching Gift in which, in which Atalanta shoots a powerful explosive bolt. In the extra skill of Atalanta called the Chain Reaction, Atalanta's ultimate triggers at the explosion effect of a Scorching Gift when it hits the enemy. And guys, Atalanta would be on this A tier. Next, we have here Rowan. So Rowan is a light bearer, a support magic with a range of 3. The ultimate skill called the Fatal Greed, in which Rowan moves for some distance and continuously provides allies with energy. We have also here the Smart Stall, in which Rowan places health potions to heal allies with low HP. And next, we have here Ake's Dance, in which Rowan calls on Ake's to either attack or absorb energy from an enemy and replenishes a health potion. And we have here the extra skill called Great Bargain, in which Rowan places a super health potion that restores an ally's max HP and permanently increases their physical defense and magic defense. So I will place this uh, Rowan guys at this uh, B tier. So next uh, we have here Vela. So Vela guys is a light bearer, a rogue, a physical with a range of a 7. Her ultimate skill called a Swift Shift in which Vela switches to the Sky Blaster mode, damaging and stunning enemies. Or she switches to Sword mode, dealing enormous true damage. And we have here the notice beforehand. Vala marks an enemies with a star notice, attacking the marked enemy in priority and absorbing their energy. And next, we have here the checkmate, in which Vala deals damage to an enemy and reduces their haste or deals damage three times to an enemy. And the extra skill of Vala called Night Maneuver, in which Vala's movement speed and haste are increased when a marked enemy is defeated. So Vala guys will be on this S tier. Next, we have here Ella. So Ella is a light bearer, a mage, a magic with a range of 3. And the ultimate skill called Running Tide, in which Ella's, uh, Ella knocks back an enemy and deals damage to the enemy's straight line. And we have also here Undercurrent. Ella deals a lot of damage to an enemy. And also we have here the Tidal Strength, in which Ella blesses an ally. And when the ally normals attack hits an enemy, she deals additional damage to them. 
and the extra attack of this uh, ally called the uh, Tidal Blessing, in which all allies in the range gain the blesses of Tidal Strength. So uh, this uh, ally guys will be placed on this uh, A tier. Next, uh, we have here the new hero Burial. So this Burial guys is a Hypogene, a rogue, a magic with a range of 1. And guys, uh, this is a new hero. And also we have here a new class called Hypogene. And we have here the ultimate skill called Scared Swamp. In which a Burial hides within the shadow and uh, follows the target dealing damage to the target and absorbing energy continuously. During which he gains control immunity and cannot be targeted. Then he jumps out to damage and uh, frighten adjacent enemies. We have also here the Shadow Trick. In which uh, Burial hides within the shadow. If isolated uh, enemies exist, he moves toward the targets and deals damage. Otherwise, restoring HP continuously within the shadow and returning to his original tile. We have also here the skill called Devil's Contract. In which a Burial hides within the shadow for a while after being defeated. Upon a non-summoned enemy is taken down, he will be revived from the vanquished enemy and restore a certain amount of HP. And the extra skill of this is called... Uh, Shadow Reflection, if non-summoned enemies remain isolated for a while, they will generate a silhouette that loses HP over time and can only deal damage by normal attacks. And guys, Burial here would be on this S tier or maybe on this S plus tier. So Burial is number one. So next uh, we have here Scarlita. So Scarlita guys is a Celestial, a Warrior, a Physical with a range of 1. So the ultimate skill of Scarlita called Divine Quake in which uh, Scarlita slashes the ground and creates a 3 tile wild rock wave to knock enemies back to the battlefield's edge. Then charges the targets to launch a mighty strike and knock them down. We have also the skill called uh, Pure Cleanse in which Scarlita charges the power to mid-air for a while after the battle starts. Then descends onto the battlefield and deal AoE damage and stuns enemies at a critical moments we have also here the valkyrie spirit in which it grants the weakest allied hero a shield when hovering mid-air and deals aoe damage with the axe upon landing and the extra skill you have your divine judgment in which it deals true damage when there are enough surviving allied heroes so guys at this scarlita will be at this s tier and burial and the scarlita would be the s plus so guys i thank you for watching and this is the tier list for afk journey 2 until then, see you next time. Bye-bye.